I'm ready to talk about this. Let's get a little uncomfortable. Okay, guys. Hi, guys. It's Abril again. I am back with a more uncomfortable topic. This topic, it hits at home. Not only my home, but also the home of others. Um, let's talk about it, yeah? I think it's time. <laughs> All right, guys, have my notes here because, you know, I want to still keep it a little professional, do my little research. So, not too long ago, I was actually talking to my biological father, my dad, right? And I talked to him about the experience I had when I was younger with sexual abuse. I know, I told you, it was going to get uncomfortable. Girl, I feel uncomfortable telling you this. I feel, girl and boy, I feel uncomfortable telling you this. But it's time for us to get out of this taboo that being sexual abuse. And when I told him this, he first asked, like, it's really awesome because, like, I didn't have the closest relationship with my father, so that's my personal story again. But the point is, what he told me is what really shook me. It definitely changed my perspective, and it made me do this video. He at me with such kind eyes and said, Abril, I wish I would have taught you how to respect yourself. I wish I would have taught you that you're not an object. And I wish I would have taught you your own parent does not own your body. So first thing I want to talk about is if you are currently someone who's becoming conscious about an act that has been done on you, I want to let you know that sexual abuse by definition, right? I am not a licensed therapist or um, psychiatrist, right? But I have done my own research, obviously, traumas. You start doing your own research, you start wanting to heal, and you start searching. So I know there's an awesome therapist, Katie Morton, on YouTube. She's pretty awesome. If you guys are starting the healing process, I recommend her. Um, she talks about also sexual abuse. She's like, what is sexual abuse? Someone asked her that, right? And she said, sexual abuse by definition is, is it a lewd or lascivious act? Let me Google that real quick. Lascivious. Okay. So again, that's feeling or revealing revealing an over and offensive sexual desire. We're gonna let you guys know that you are validated. If you are even questioning sexual abuse, that already shows what is missing in our culture and society and what we need to teach kids. Because kids, anyone, any age, should not question whether they're being sexually abused. Any uncomfort is sexual abuse. So just letting you guys know, it has to just be of sexual nature. It does not have to be actual sex. Context can be sexual, and that is sexual abuse. So, I'm here to tell you, if you feel in any way that way, honor yourself. And let's start healing. But on this topic, how do we talk about such an uncomfortable topic with our kids? This goes to the parents, or literally anyone in society that just deals with kids, right? Anyone. How do we start teaching our friends, family, any kid, or anyone, really, about sexual consent and all of that, right? There's kind of like two types of people, and again, talk about dualities a lot here. In this one, it helps out to explain the topic. Um, so there's two types. There's a family that knows that the act has happened, right? So the kid has been very bold and brave and congrats to you, have told your parent what happened. And there's a kid, and I ate chips, sorry. And there's a kid who has not told or has not even gone through the experience, right? But it's a, like an unknown right here. So two types of family that know that things could happen and another one that is unaware of what can potentially happen or what has happened. 
So I went on to the first platform, of course, Instagram. I went on to Instagram and posted a story. I will add a little screenshot of what I did. And my question was, hi guys, what are your thoughts on parenting about sexual abuse? And I wrote little stuff like tips on it. And I wrote, if it's happened or not, what tips would you give? I wrote all those things. I only got two responses. Mind you, I got around almost 100 views on that post. And I would consider my feed to be very politically aware people or you can say woke people. But I only got two responses. I am not shaming. And this is what I want to let you guys know right now. This is not shaming. I want to show how taboo the topic is. I don't want to shame anyone because that's the first step to inhibiting any growth outside of the victim who experienced it, right? We want the parents to be able to talk about it and the family and everyone. Topics and this open conversation begins because again, this video is just to open a conversation. It's the first response, I think, was very awesome, but this is more for if you know what's happened already. They suggested open dialogue about triggers and working through trauma together. I thought that was really awesome because if you're trying to talk about an uncomfortable topic, maybe you want to ask the kid, how is this affecting you, right? So what are your triggers? And how can we work through this? Um, again, that's if it's no. Next person wrote, check out sex positive unders underscore families. So I went on obviously to check it, Instagram, but it says, you can teach children how to set healthy boundaries by maintaining yours. So this goes with my next topic. So I went over that, right? So the persons, the two people who responded, one of them gave me awesome little tips of how we can help, right? Again, working with triggers, working through trauma together. So again, being very open-minded as a family to begin to talk about the uncomfortable things, right? The second person gave us a resource, right? Which is a sex positive underscore families. Right? I thought that was really awesome because we have a resource and we have tips. Now I want to talk about my experience. I wanted to go with Instagram so we can get a full gauge of what people think, but obviously my community still considers it pretty taboo or doesn't know how to put their input. And it's okay, this is just the beginning. So I want to talk about my experience and my response as to how we can make this less taboo. When I was going through this, I did want my parents to be very open-minded. And like the first person said, go over triggers. Um, yes, I think that was very important. My brother was actually one of my best supporters. He helped me through my triggers constantly. And yes, my whole family worked through this trauma with me. Obviously, we separated from our big family and went to our own little thing. That helped a lot because I no longer had to encounter that person anymore and I can really flourish. And but, there's a lot of buts because that's as far as our knowledge went. And ignorance, ignorance is bliss, guys. Because look at me now, I'm awesome now. But I definitely have seen this is not enough for some people. And I'm telling you, everybody is different. We are all different people. We all carry different baggages. We all need to clear different emotions as I have, as I have talked about in my previous videos. If you want to tell you what you shouldn't do too. Try not to shame or guilt the kid because when you shame and guilt the kid, it shows that you yourself carry shame and guilt. So clear your own emotions because you both, you carry traumas and you carry that energy onto your child. You guys to start doing the work because you guys need to do the work too. This is why this is a taboo topic for you because you guys have not exposed your own emotions. And now your kid is being brave, exposing their emotion and you're here feeling tension from the topic because it burns when something is real is hurting your little circle, right? So it burns, it hurts. Yes, we all have to deal with these things. Again, forgiving. That is more for the kid itself. If you're the person experiencing what happened, it's very important for you to start to forgive. You can't carry the burden of the person's acts on you because then you're just carrying more trauma throughout your life. You're gonna carry on to your kids, future generations to come. It's not fun. So if you come from a forgiving cart, you're able to give less power to what happened and you take your power back. 
You fully empower your full self and you're able to smile and go on with your life without carrying that as an experience that becomes your present moment. In that you can leave it as a part of you, an experience that happened to you that created you who you are now and now move on from that and grow, right? That's the whole point that once you are conscious of what's happening and you're aware that it happened, you can grow now. Teach your kids inner work, okay? Tell them to start doing their inner work because your words won't immediately help the child. Your kid or whatever age that person is that's going through this can't be helped by just the outside world. They have to actually look that they are the conscious creators of their own reality. So if they want to experience the world in a victim mindset, then they're going to continue to experience it like that. But if they want to experience the world differently and start growing from the moments that were bad and good, right? Then we have to start doing inner work, especially in such a traumatic thing like this. We have to start doing the inner work. And again, it could come from having someone like a psychologist, psychiatrist, one of those certified people to actually help with the inner work. So making the actual experience more concrete and put it into perspective, right? Whenever you go with a therapist, they put everything that happened to your life in perspective and you're able to finally label maybe what happened to you. Again, that's a very black and white thing. When your kid is telling you these things or, or even if they're not telling you specifically, I'm sexually abused, listen. Don't always input, just listen. Listen to what your kid is saying what he can mean by what he's saying and maybe you can expose a case if you don't know that your kid is sexually abused yet or whatever, right? You can just, or even if they're just uncomfortable, if someone's making them feel uncomfortable, someone's touching them in a weird way, talking about them in a weird way, like that is sexual abuse. There is no one thing. Again, listen to your kid. Also, if your kid is actually already exposing the information to you, just listen. You don't have to put your input, you don't have to say, this and that, this is right and wrong. No, this is time for you to just listen and be open to any method that they want to try to be able to grow. Right? Family therapy, like be open to whatever your kid wants to try now that they're being more open about it. If you're not comfortable with that, again, this is an uncomfortable topic, letting you know about what happened to them is just the beginning of it. From here, it's going to be a lot of them doing inner work and really experiencing life a different manner of taking full control back to themselves tell them it's hard work let them know that this is just the beginning it's gonna get rough and it's gonna be good but then all at the end it it all was really worth it all the work and lastly let's all educate ourselves not only you but your kids educate your kids and educate yourself constantly just like with these posts you are not entitled to a child's body that is literally what my dad told me. He is not, he, he was just saying, if I would have told you I am not entitled to your body, you would have known if my dad shouldn't be touching me, then that man who touched me shouldn't have been touching me. This is important for all of us, okay? Now to my future generations. Though, obviously it's a statistic, it's one out of every four girls and one out of every six boys reported is sexually abused so i am one of the four that was sexually abused let's educate ourselves let's be more aware of what our kids are doing and to my future generations you are heard educate yourself too your parents do not know everything if you see your parents do any weird things tell someone this goes to the victim as well. If you're trying to let someone know what happened to you already, tell someone. And if they don't listen to you, don't give up on yourself. You be strong. You keep on going forward and try to figure out you are the answer. Once you validate yourself, you don't need anybody else's validation. So you just have to find the right person. So it doesn't matter if that one person who you confided in didn't believe you. You keep on going to the next person because again, you have to validate your experience and then you can keep on moving forward. It goes with life in general. Validate yourself 
and then you can keep on going on with life because you don't have to wait on anybody else for for results or anything it all comes from you do the inner work it sounds weird to say you guys are our future abusers but something that i learned from my compassion after my whole experience with my with what happened with me is that predators were once kids too and if they didn't get teached right then that's why they committed these acts right they had no love for themselves or the second part of this video was me telling families how to teach the kids is because your kids are the future and that's why i said abusers the future victims let's not repeat cycles guys let's empower our kids educate our kids and remember guys this is just the beginning of this conversation i am just starting this very uncomfortable situ com i am just starting this very uncomfortable conversation i feel uncomfortable telling you my story so i understand that you would feel uncomfortable hearing my story so remember to my future generations to my parents or anybody who literally all of society who deals with kids right and my victims that are not victims because you guys are conscious now we can change our mindset and become more growing individuals your healing is my healing and that i think is what will conclude this video it's my story to share to you guys for growth so you guys can grow as well i mean comment if there's anything you guys think i should have touched on um topics or maybe more videos i should include um again this is just part of healing i know i make funny videos every or fun videos but i also do believe in talking about these uncomfortable things right especially as you have seen now in society a lot of things going on uncomfortable topics we need to talk about um yeah so let's open up the conversations for uncomfortable topics and subscribe if you want to hear more of what i talk about Thank you so much for watching it. I am beyond grateful for you listening to my story. And let's open our hearts to all the people who have experienced these uncomfortable things.